Yeah, we've been tracking the blockchain elements for about 18 months or so. Obviously, the technology comes out of the cryptocurrencies first founded uh, with, with Bitcoin back in what, 12, 2012 or so. Um, there's some advantages, unique advantages in that technology. First of all, it's a distributed ledger of the, of the information. It's immutable, so that it's non-editable, um, but it can be permissioned so that only certain parties can see that information. But it's sharing, ultimately, a single source of truth. Now, many parties today part, uh, process the same information in their own systems, and they come out with different results. So for us, blockchain is a single source of truth which can be exposed and used by all parties. And one of the things that's very common in the back office to middle office in the banking industry is it involves a multitude of systems and a multitude of external services, making it highly inefficient. So a very simple FX payment, for example, involves multiple parties, multiple systems, uh, and takes two to three days to, from the inception of that trade to its settlement. Blockchain would give us the opportunity to radically re-engineer those operations so that instead of taking several days, it takes a few moments to complete and everybody can see that data in an instance. Uh, we have been actually exploring this technology and using this technology for the last four years. We have delivered until now uh, 44 proof of concepts uh, together with seven pilots in production and uh, we are focusing obviously on bringing this technology uh, and deploying the technology for the benefits uh, to ING and also to our clients. Actually, we have been doing several pilots, including clients uh, within, you know, and specific value chain, like for example, in the areas of payments, in the areas of trade finance, in the areas of post-trade uh, and financial markets. And what we have seen is actually a benefit in terms of, you know, you have more real-time access to information, you have newly available data, and uh, that also enhances, for example, the liquidity for our clients, and sometimes, you know, it reduces the capital uh, uh, that they might have. Uh, you are making uh, um, items or actually uh, tokens or um, a specific assets more liquid, which also helps our clients to manage better, you know, their collateral, the liquidity, and some of those, uh, uh, um, yeah, requirements. So we're looking at providing blockchain networks to our clients, but also looking at the value-added services which are layer on top of those. For example, in the uh, there are initiatives over the last couple of years which have looked at payments, cross-border payments, for example. Uh, which are often underpinned by a cryptocurrency. Um, but it's understanding the consequences of those trades to the bank. So they need a, a measure of liquidity management over the top of the blockchain network itself. We're interested in providing those additional value-added services as well as uh, a basic blockchain network capability uh, as in our own right. So we are a very big player in trade and commodity finance, in shipping, in mining, um, and we have come to the conclusion that there's a lot of um, things that we can bring to our clients to make their whole process in the trade chain way easier than it is today. A new piece of technology that we created for the blockchain, uh, especially around privacy. We think that blockchain is a very interesting technology for our clients. Uh, but we should enable them to keep their privacy on the blockchain and to select themselves what they want to share. So already last year we um, did a zero-knowledge range proof, uh, which is uh, an algorithm basically that, that can hide certain elements uh, in a range of numbers. And this year we announced uh, a new algorithm that could do sort of the same for a set of uh, words or countries or blacklist or whatever you think. So you can actually prove that you're a citizen of the EU without revealing where you live. You can prove that you're not on a blacklist without revealing who you are. The banking partners that we have, the banking clients we have, they are starting to be more and more focused on uh, which banks are actually investing in new technology. And if they look for new banking partners, they more and more put that high on their criteria list. Who is investing in DLT? Who is investing in advanced analytics? That's the ones they want to work with.